allow for strengthening trade and economic development between the two countries. President Tinubu made this acknowledgement while expressing his appreciation for the invitation, noting that the visit marked a second to China, first as governor of Lagos and now as president. Meanwhile, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, reiterated his readiness to work closely with President Bola Tinubu to fully unleash the exemplary roles of China and Nigerian diplomatic friendship and advanced China Africa cooperation. President Xi stated that since establishing diplomatic ties half a century ago, China and Nigeria have treated each other with mutual understanding, seeking collective strength, unity, and win win cooperation. The meeting culminated in the signing of the Offer Memorandum of Understanding and Belt on Belt and Road Initiative Project new exchange cooperation and television cooperation, among others. The federal government has denied a report suggesting that the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, or that the Nigerian Pe National Petroleum Company Limited to sell fuel at 1,000 Naira above the appro approved pump price. The report claimed that the Minister for Petroleum Resources, Henneken Lakobiri, gave the NNPCL the directive dismissing the report in a statement signed by the Special Advisor, Media and Communication to Lapobiri Nemaka Okafor. who said that the federal government declared that the report was concocted and ill-conceived to sow discord and confusion in the oil industry. The statement stressed that there was never a time the federal government interfered with petroleum pricing with NNPCL, let alone give directives for price increments. The Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority has explained why the United States Federal Aviation Administration delisted Nigeria from its Category 1 status. According to a statement by the Acting Director General, Chris Nadzomo, the removal was due to the fact that no Nigerian airline currently provides flight services to the United States. Mr. Nadzomo emphasized that Nigeria's delisting has had nothing to do with any safety or security def deficiencies in the country's oversight system. He stated that Nigeria had successfully undergone comprehensive audits by the International Civil Aviation Organization without any significant safety or security concerns. The statement also noted that Nigerian operators could still operate flights to the U.S. using aircraft wet leased from a country with a current Category 1 status. Minister of Arts, Culture, and Creative Economy, Hanatsu Musawa, has unveiled a comprehensive strategic roadmap for the nation's creative sector in a move to set to define Nigeria's cultural landscape. The presentation took place at the United Nations House in Abuja during the Diplomatic and International Development Partners Forum. The forum, which is a cornerstone initiative by FMACCE, is designed to spotlight the vast opportunities within Nigeria's Bargaining, creative economy, encompassing arts, culture, and innovation. Mrs. Musa highlighted that the sector is a pivotal driver of employment, particularly for Nigerians' youth, emphasizing that the presentation is a crucial step towards securing sustainable partnership and support reinforcing Nigerians' ambition to become Africa's creative capital. The minister also praised President Bola Tinu for the role in establishing the ministry acknowledging his visionary support as instrumental to the ministry's success since its inception. A member of the House of Representatives, Alassane Dogua, has stressed the need for the Independent Nas National Electoral Commission to conduct local government elections to promote democracy at the grassroots level. Honorable Dogua, who represents Dogua to Dumwada Federal Constituency of Kano State, made the call while addressing his constituents in the ancient city. In a statement made available to newsmen, the lawmaker noted that until the relevant laws were reviewed, the third tier of governments will continue to play little or no part in grassroots development, thus worsening rural urban migration and its attendant challenges. He noted that INEC is the only reliable electoral umpire, and electoral and constitutional laws must be reviewed for INEC to conduct local council elections, otherwise local council elections in Nigeria will continue to be a caricature of what they should be. The lawmaker added that only elections conducted by the electoral body would help deepen the nation's democratic and enhancing our electioneering system. 
announced to support the president of Badminton Federation of Nigeria, Francis Obi, has described Eniola Bolaji's bronze medal feat at the Paris 2024 Paralympics para badminton event as a product of investment. Francis Obi hailed the player for putting Nigeria on the badminton map, saying she crossed through the hurdles to achieve the feat. Bolaji defeated Kozina Oksana of Ukraine 21-9 to win a bronze medal and become the first Nigerian and African athlete to win an Olympic or Paralympic medal in badminton. The president added that though the journey was a rough ride, but a medal was earned to show for the efforts and investments both on the part of the federation and more importantly from the player. He noted that the star's remarkable victory is a testament to her unwavering dedication exceptional talent and relentless pursuits of excellence adding that our achievement has become a source of inspiration for aspiring athletes across africa and nigeria and on the foreign scene an attempted jailbreak in congo's main prison in the capital kinshasa has left at least 129 people dead most of them in a stampede congolese interior minister jacquemini shabani said the provisional assessment showed that 24 inmates were shot dead by warning gunshots as they tried to escape from the overcrowded Makala Central Prison in Kinshasa. The Interior Minister stated that there are also 59 injured people taken into care by the government as well as some cases of women raped, adding that the other has been restored at the prison, part of which was burned in the attack. Justice Minister Constant Mutamba called the attack a primitive premeditated act of sabotage, adding that those who instigated these acts of sabotage will receive a stern warning, a stern response. Justice Mutamba also announced a ban on transferring inmates from the prison, saying authorities will build a new prison, among other efforts, to reduce overcrowding. And that ends the evening news on OSBC TV. Join us at 7 for the major reports. Good evening.